honorable members of this commission. My name is Oswobeni Doris Dabibiri. I if you speak up the record in your voice. With utmost respect, my lord. Uh, hi, honorable members of the commission. My name is Osubeni Dabibiri Doris. I only appear for Connor Stephen Itehiri. May it please <coughs> your lordship and members of the commission, I appear for General Ibrahim Sabo. And my name is Omar Shitien. Appearing with me is Mr. Nambal. Uh, thank you, my lord. With due respect to the chairman, an honorable member of the commission, Tunde Adeoye, for Colonel O. Magayogbe, retired. Respectfully, my lord, I appear for General I. R. Bamay. I am YC Maikyo. The following learned gentlemen appear with me T. George Tendezwa, Lydia Joe Maduku, and Victor C. Mwaugu. Well, my lord is actually not, but uh, at the beckoning of Mr. Akaka, I just have to. Because uh, his name is not been mentioned, is nowhere mentioned in the petition. Uh, yes, my lord. I don't know. Why. Cancel. Are they involved? It's not. We are not. Is there a mix up? I don't know how all these uh, heavyweights are in a small case like this. Well, actually, at the last date, uh, my lord recalled that. In the cause of evidence of uh, Brigadier General Sabu, his name was mentioned, actually. And in that respect, my learned friend appear, announced appearance for him and even demanded that a copy of the petition should I be given. I thought we were talking him. about the petition of Zeribe. Exactly, my lord, that's what uh -huh. I'm addressing on. Bombs and things kept on. General Sabu was the third witness. In his cause of evidence, he mentioned General Bamai when the issue as to why the people that planted the bomb in the house of the petitioner were mentioned that they were supposed to be court-martialed. So he made a reference to the fact that perhaps General Bamai uh, frustrated their court-martial. Yes, my lord. The commission order, because the matter was investigated by one major, Adekia, who is now present, that ordered that they should produce a copy of the report conducted in respect of those bombs that were planted in Chief, the petitioner's house. Sabo, in his evidence, said that he handed it over to the DMI when he left office. But see, an officer is from the DMI here, Lieutenant Colonel Abdul Kader. He is saying that they never received any such report. But the officer that investigated it said he conducted an investigation and there was a report he issued. But he handed it over to Colonel Steve Idehere, who is equally present. So I think since the parties are here, my lord, we call two or three of them. They are witnesses. The evidence, I believe, will be very short. No. Sabo is not required today. Sabo has, has given, given evidence. evidence. He has given evidence. He has already given evidence. Yes. Uh, we just have them here. to come back. No, my lord. Uh, you see, we have to notify them that this matter is here in case right. if their counsel has it's to appear. Right. And they can say something against call them. Call witnesses. Yes, my lord. Uh, may we now call on Colonel Steve Idenher. How many witnesses? My lord, he will be the fourth witness. Fourth. Fourth. My lord, if I may venture to expatiate on what happened on the last date. Well, Lord, I recall that uh, General Sabo had not completed his evidence. When the case was adjourned, in order for the principal actors to come and give evidence. So I think that's as far as my record uh, notes. General Maybe Sabo has not completed his evidence. If that is correct, then ask him to step down then. Then he steps in. 
Well, my lord, the, he, 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 the case was adjourned in order for them, the principal actors, to come and give evidence. You say it hasn't concluded. Do you want it to conclude? No, I want them to go on before he then can come back because he actually was not there. He was in the war college when all this happened. Why but do you say he has not concluded his evidence? My lord, he still has some evidence which will be, which will be material before your commission. Sir. That's why I'm asking you. Do you want him to conclude? I don't want him to conclude until they have given evidence, sir. Isn't it neater if he hasn't concluded? Let him conclude. Your lordship will see that later on that it is not neater. It will, it will be neater to go this way, sir. I will call him later, sir. That's all right. The only thing is that this is not a court. If it's a court, I will say no. But this is a, <laughs> uh, you can call and recall and then... Do you have any objection to his going on? My Lord, uh, he, the has record is there. Evidence. he has concluded evidence. If he my learned friend is saying that he would like to recall him, that's another matter. Because we stopped at the stage where he said the reports were handed over to the people who took over from him. So he concluded his evidence then. So, but if the counsel is saying that he would like to recall him, perhaps after uh, additional evidence from these new witnesses, um, he should say so in a clear term. All right, swear him. I, <laughs> Colonel Stephen D. Henry, retired, do solemnly swear that the evidence I shall give before this commission shall be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. So help me God. Please. Tell this honorable commission your names. My name is Colonel Stephen Ide Henry, retired. Where do you live? I live at Omoli Estate, Ikeja, Lagos. Uh, Colonel what? Stephen Ide Henry, I D E H E N R E. What do you do for a living? I am a retired officer, I live on my pension. As and when paid. Well, <laughs> I manage whatever they give me. You have read through the petition on illegal detention by Shishuma in Zerube. Very well. Are the allegations correct? They are largely correct. There are one or two areas that are not correct. But I would say 80 to 90 percent correct. I have no doubt to doubt any area I'm not too familiar with. I think they are correct. Who was the director of military intelligence as of 1st July 1997? I was. You? Yes, okay. me. Okay. <laughs> Who ordered the release of Shishuma in Zeribe? I did. I ordered his release from detention. Who ordered a preliminary investigation to unnet the truth of the matter? I did. As a DMI, I ordered investigation to know the truth of the matter. Kone, what did you do to these hearing officers and soldiers? Well, I ordered preliminary investigation and found out that the allegation that he was framed up was actually correct. I now arrested all the soldiers involved detained them, ordered the immediate release of Chief Chuma Nzeribe with an apology to him that justice will be done. I detained even Colonel Majegbe, who is senior to me in rank, I detained him and ordered investigation into the matter. Colonel, please tell this commission the names of these hearing officers and soldiers. Uh, the leader is Colonel Ola Majo Yegbe. The others are Captain Dulaga, Warrant Officer Razak, Corporal Ode, Private Aburime, 
and private, I think, Cletus. These were those involved. Colin, now there's usually a disciplinary action taken against hearing officers in the army. Sure. Were, were, were these disciplinary action taken against these officers or they were merely arrested and detained by you? Uh, no. I arrested all of them and even went as far as to arrest the civilian counterpart. Uh, uh, the popular Ezego, Victor Okafo. And we conducted the investigation. A preliminary report was written. And when I left office, these people were still in detention. And I can tell you, investigation continued. And the report was sent to Army headquarters. Army headquarters forwarded the report to the Director of Legal Services for advice. An advice was given, and the main culprit, Kone Majegwe, was posted to the LGC for jurisdiction to be court martialed. Eventually, he was compulsorily retired from service. So there was a beginning to this process. An offense was committed, it was detected, action was taken. It went through its process. It went through its process and disciplinary action was taken. Notwithstanding, somewhere down the line, there were many intrigues, which we may bring out later. Okay. Now, Colonel, please turn to page one of Chief Izeribe's petition. Please, let me get it. I believe you have a copy with you. I have a copy, but I have to look for it. I have a zero based petition. Okay. Page one, paragraph two. Please read from the second sentence. The entire frame up episode was masterminded by the following Colonel Steve Ide Henry. Acting, DM, acting Director of Military Intelligence, DMI. Colonel Maju Igwe, Director of Intelligence Production Center. Captain Dulaga, Surveillance and Operations Team. Warrant Officer Razak, the same team, DMI. Victor Okafo, late patron, financier of Youth Earnestly Asked for Abacha. Uh, Assem uh, okay. Mr. Ifiani Unwa Buife, currently at Anambra State House of Assembly, a government agent, and Okafos 2IC, and CY Obuna Diki, Anambra State Chairman of Youth Earnestly Asked for Abacha. There's a last one there. Okay, there's one more, number yes. eight. Charles Maduka. CSO to Victor Okafor. Now, Kone, you've read through this and your name is number one there. Were you one of those responsible for the frame up arrest and detention of Chief Shuma Izeribe? No. I mean, for 10 months as claiming his petition? No. How could I have been? When I was the one who the case was reported to, I arrested even all my officers involved. I set Shuma Izeribe free with an apology to be a little bit civil and make sure the case continued to its logical conclusion. There must be a mix of there. Maybe that's the 10% I'm talking that this thing is not entirely correct. Okay. Please also turn to page, page two of the petition, Chief Izenribe's petition. Mm -hmm. I'm there, my lord. Okay. Um, you can read from... Go to paragraph 6 of the petition. Read from line 2. Paragraph 6. six five. Line 2. Okay. Uh, paragraph 6, page. I suffered okay. terribly in the notorious DMI security group detention center at number A, Park Lane with the attendant damage to my health for 10 months 
of incarceration in a mosquito infested cell sorry over 128 persons instead of 12 was made the cell was made for full stop please that's okay it's all right now Connell, where was she deserve detained in july 1997 when you ordered his release oh he was detained in a dmi camp headquarters nowhere near security group we are talking about here okay so this is a different place entirely very very different who was the director of military intelligence as at 1st September 1997? Okay, when is this? Not go far out. What are we investigating? Human rights violation against this in Zeribe. Yes, yes, my lord. Now, when he discovered that he was wrongly detained, he let him go. What are we pursuing again? He was rearrested, my lord. Rearrested? Re yes, yes, my lord. He was rearrested. We are trying to arrive at somewhere. When he discovered that we were wrong, and let him go. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> So now, Colonel, I mean, who was the director of military intelligence? Brigadier General I.A. Sabo is here. But Brigadier General Sabo had earlier told this commission on oath that he was not the DMI. That, in fact, he was still at National War College Abuja when she, Shuma Inzeribe was detained, I think rearrested. I think you don't know General Sabo. That's why you believe such things. Sorry to say, General Sabo was the DMI as at, in fact, one month before 1st September, after I had released Nzeribe, he has gone, a free man. It was when Jina Sabo came back from war college and I handed over to him on 5th August 1997 and I went to my house to rest that all this concoction, intrigues, whatever call it any name started again he's in a better position to tell you why i was not dmi general sabu and sorry i must add it is normal from what i've heard general sabu say to this commission it's not only this case there's hardly any any evidence general sabu has given to this commission that is true as a former director of military intelligence i know and i have documents to show, but I'm talking of Chibun Zerube's case now. It is a lie. Who lied? Who lied? General Sabu? He's here. He's here. And he has been telling you lies for the past three months. Three lies upon lies. I will get to that. I will get there. Okay. Now, Cornel. Cornel Denry, do you have any? Do you have any evidence to show to this honorable commission that you actually handed over to Brigadier General Sabu before 1st of September 1997? Handing over certificate signed by Sabu and myself, 5th August. We signed, he came back from war college, I handed over to him, he took over from me, I went my own, he took over. So that is the handing over certificate. My Lord, I seek to tender the certificate in evidence. As a former director of military... Exhibit 4, dated Please, Connell. No, I'm interested in what he said. He said he lied not only here, but in other cases. Every single case I've had on TV. Please, the document in your hand is in evidence before this commission. I would like you to read through it. Let everybody know what it contains. Please give him a copy of it.
handing and taking over certificate. Nigerian Army Intelligence Corps. This is to satisfy, sorry, this is to certify that I, Colonel S.M. Ide Henry, FSS, PSC, MA, having, be give, having given a detailed briefing, both orally and in writing, hereby hand over the command of Nigerian Army Intelligence Corps to Brigadier General I.A. Sabo on this fifth day of August 1997. Signed, S.M. Ide Henry, Colonel, Acting DMI. And that I, Brigadier General I.A. Sabo, FSS, MSS, PSC, OSC, KNOB, FWC. <laughs> Having been given a satisfactory briefing, orally and in writing, by Colonel S.M. Ide Henry, hereby take over the command of Nigerian Army Intelligence Corps on this fifth day of August 1997. Signed, I.A. Sabu, Brigadier General, DMI. Colonel, as a former Director of Military Intelligence, please explain to this Honorable Commission the motives of Chief Shuma Izeribe's detention for 10 months. I would have liked to say I was not there, like someone else would have said. But as an intelligence officer, I know why he was detained. And I know the motive. You see, General Sabo belonged to a group in Nigerian army, which I call, and I will explain, the killer group. This group have as trade in stock, stock in trade, falsification, lying. Please talk into the microphone. Okay, sir. This group, which I call the killer group, which Sabo belonged to, has as his stock in trade, falsification writing false report, intimidation, coercion, anything, and above all, extreme wickedness of man to man. The hallmark of this group's stock in trade, you can call evil. This group has four members. Air Vice Marshal Idi Musa, Director of Defense Intelligence Agency, who is the person who gives legality to whatever they are doing because of his seniority. Brigadier General I.A. Sabu, I don't want to use any derogatory remark now. Let me just leave it at that. The, the attributes will come out later. Colonel Frank Omenka, who is the person that undertakes all the dirty job for the group. And Colonel Kola Wale Olu, who is the double-faced secretary of this group. Now, during General Basha's era, late General Basha, so many things were said about human rights violation in Nigeria. I can assure you that Nearly every atrocity is committed in this country on the military. Because what you don't know is that the military suffered more than the civilians. But everybody is group military. That's why I brought out this group, the killer group. They intimidated this nation. They made General Abasha impotent by feeding him with daily report of perceived and imaginary enemies. Calling every, anybody that enters their trap is planning to overthrow Abasha. 
Unfortunately, that is where Chief Unziribe fell into their net. Now, you, you will not understand what I am saying if I do not give you a little bit of insight into the activities of this group. And it also derives from Chief Unzeribe's case, because this case is very interesting. All the attributes of this killer group, you can trace them to this case. For example, I spend all my time in the military, direction of military intelligence releasing people detained unjustly. General Sabo spent all his time rearresting them. It's, it's incredible. I am not saying this with mouth. I will show you document which, thank God, four years ago, they were even using against me. What was it? We arrest this person, you release him. We arrest this person, you release him. That was my crime. Thank God Chief Unzeribe came to this commission. And I released him, General Sabo rearrested him. The unfortunate thing, my Lord, is that one would have thought after retirement from service, General Sebo would have learned a, a little bit of lesson in humanity and changed his ways. But he did not. He came to this commission with the same killer group instinct and subjected this commission to a lot of falsehood, lies, deceit. My Lord, except you have an insight into the activities, the modus operandi of this killer group, you cannot understand the motive why Chief Unzeribe was detained. Colonel, please, I, I want you to tell the Commission the activities of this so-called killer group, such that the Commission will better appreciate the entire, the, the entire, the motive, sorry, the motive of Chief Unzeribe's detention. And then it will also help the Commission to clarify the issue raised in this petition. Thank you. My Lord, Chief, I will just go straight to Chief Unzeribe's petition. I will tell this commission exactly what I know, what happened about that petition. Somewhere down the line, you will find out that some of the things I will say appear like fairy tale. How is it possible? That is where I will need to digress a little bit. But very mindful that this commission has one that we should be petition specific. But I will only digress to the extent that I will use other examples to buttress what happened to Nzeri Bay and what I am saying. I therefore beg the indulgence of this commission uh, not to hold me uh, foul on a, the issue of digression that are not petition specific. Everything I'm going to say is going to have relationship to this petition. My Lord Chief Chuman Zeribe's case. I was appointed DMI on 2nd September 1996 when General Sabo was going to War College. By July, General Sabo was on his way back from War College. Then on the 23rd July, one Navy Captain CO Ifebuzo came to my office as DMI. He complained that one chief, Nzeribe, was detained in our facilities. He was held for something. And that it is a, it is a prolongation of the politics of Ihiala local government. That chief Nzeribe and Victor Kafo, popularly called Ezego, were involved in the tussle for supremacy at Ihiala. That Chief Unzeribe wrote a petition, false petition, against Ezego Victor Okafo that led to Ezego to be detained in Abuja by the police, a false petition. And now Ezego is now trying to repay, uh, sorry, Ezego is now trying to repay Chuma by making false allegation against him and planting bomb in his place. I said, no problem. I will look into it. I called an officer, Major Adeka, who is my staff officer grade two. And from what I had, 
I, I, I'm sorry, maybe I'm biased, I'm uh, biased to some extent. The person involved in this thing was a Yoruba man. The, uh, the, person, the persons involved are Igbos. I therefore deliberately chose a Hausa Muslim person, a Northerner, that will not give me any wrong report. That's how my choice, choice fell on Adeka, who is known to be a very strictly religious person. Within two hours, on the same 23rd, Major Adeka came back to me to say, Sir, there's a problem. I can imagine send some people to hear now. And from what I see, he did it in a way that you know there's something behind it. And they really arrested the people this Navy captain has come to release. I say, What? Now that I'm trying to go after serving so well for how many months? Look at this one. I say, okay. I did I think up to now I don't know Chief Chuman Zeribe as I'm talking. But I've seen his photograph because I have something with his photograph here. I now ask Adeka, Major Adeka, go to where in Zeribe is the all those people. One, release them immediately. So far you have brought this report to me. Give them a little bit of apology for whatever happened. Tell them we are going to look into the case and no stone will be left unturned. He released Chief Chuma Nzerebe. By then I became aware that Chuma Nzerebe has been in detention. That was the fifth day. It happened I think on a Thursday or so or Friday and I got to know about it on Tuesday because I traveled during the weekend. Chief Chuma Nzeribe was released. And we asked him, that's the directive I gave, to be coming because we are going to start investigation. To be coming every day from his house. I now ordered everybody involved in that illegal activity to be arrested and in place of Nzeribe to be detained. I now ordered a letter of displeasure because Kone Majegbe, who, was, who is the master of this operation, is actually senior to me in rank. I now wrote a, directed a letter of displeasure from me to be written to him and all what they were doing to be stopped on that same 23rd. I now directed that since they said Ezego Victor Okafo was the person who plotted with Kone Majegbe to, to arrest Chief Nzeribe. I now said they should go and look for that person and arrest him. To cut it short, my lord, when they went to arrest him, he is a stinkingly worthy person. His house is Palasha, both in Lagos and Ihiala. He had certain escape route. He ran into his ceiling and hid there. They searched all over the house. They could not get him. It's just by luck that because the person with the, those we sent were really experienced, that they were able to climb the ceiling because somebody told them he was in. They looked everywhere, they didn't see him. So they started searching the unlikely places. They now met our friend hiding in the ceiling and brought him down. I detained him. So, my lord, all those involved, including their civilian accomplices, were detained. I now asked the officer and his team to write a preliminary report because we may require more than what you can do in three or four days. He wrote the report, gave it to me, we put it in the file and recommended that more action should be taken to discipline the soldiers involved and then to look how, what to be done to Ezego who masterminded it. Normally you should hand over such person to the police. This was from 23rd to 28th of July 1997. On 5th August, 5th August, I had
handed over to Brigadier General Sabu. And of course, when you hand over a whole unit like that, there's no need saying it that all the pending cases, all those people detained, the report written, everything was, of course, he knew about the case given to him. My Lord, let me digress a bit to start showing the intrigue of General Sabu. I will get to a point later, but let me just say it now. Why General Sabo was in war college, he never let us rest in DMI. He was still the de facto DMI. Arrest this person, detain this person, hey, we'll do this, go and bring this. We arrested, 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 we became tired even of arrest. I released, release, release. I didn't even know what to do with the tennis again. I left them. They are records to show what I'm saying. I'm not saying it because I just want to make fun. My Lord, I have documents to show. Why in war college? How many people did Asago told me? Why did you release this man? We said you should arrest him. Why did you release him? I will still get to that later. Why don't you want to tender them? No, no, I Okay. Because my if you I have, have them, my, lord, my lord, my lord, I have a it for each one of We you. have a lot of cases in which General Sebo gave evidence. If we have something to show or the type of money is, it will help us a lot. Then I love them. My lord, I am here today as a witness and a friend of this commission, Amicus Courier. I am ready to help you. Correct, you are not Amicus Courier. <laughs> You have to be called to the bar first. <laughs> <laughs> My Lord, I am a friend of this commission. I will help you and I will help this nation. And thank God Jinasabu is here. I hope uh, Major Mustafa is here. Because eventually we shall talk and let, let everyone. I'd like us to dialogue. My Lord, I have prepared a note for you. All what I'm going to be saying, just for citing. All right. Just three. So that as I'm going on, you will be seeing them. There are some I will not present as exhibit because uh, they are not really part of this case. But just for your sighting, as I'm going, I'll be referring you to those things and you'll be looking at them. My Lord, my Lord, I don't know if uh, the colonel can kindly give us copies of this so that we can cross it. He hasn't, ten he hasn't <laughs> tendered no. them already. Yeah. All right, sir. He has them here. In fact, there's one I will not let you see until I've presented it. So, so if you need them, we'll make copies for you. My Lord, on the 5th August, I handed over to General Sabu. I left DMI, but meanwhile, there has been serious problem between us because I did not do what he wanted me to do was while he was in war college. In fact, like they usually say, I spoiled business for him and he didn't forgive me because all those reports they were sending to General Abacha, I was preferring counter opinion. This nobody wants to do overthrow you. Nobody wants to kill you. Who told you this man wants to kill you? So that one created problem for them. I will still get to that. I handed over to Jina Sabo and I went to my house. Jina Sabo refused to post me to anywhere because he was planning to either send me to jail or retire me from service as at that time. However, the investigation of this case continued under General Sabo. General Sabo now, and I have to bring this very clear, now found a way to say, this case we are talking about, that I knew before Kone Majigwe Anko went for that operation at Ihiala. He said, I knew. I said, okay, prove it to anybody. You can do what you like. He now wrote his report in his normal ways. I will not talk of the quality of those reports now. But he wrote his report, indicted everybody, including me. See, I was his main target. He now forwarded this report to Army headquarters. Army headquarters, in his wisdom and in the way it should be, 
forwarded the entire report to the director of Army Legal Services for advice. The director of Army Legal Services advised that of all the names listed, Colonel Majegbe is the only person who committed an offense. He should be tried because those he sent to Ihiala thought they were obeying a legal authority. However, the advice of Army Legal Service to Army Headquarters was that only Kone Majegbe had a case to answer. And I'm happy to say, the person who signed that, I don't know how he happened, who signed that report, is present here today. Kone Muku is here. And during this uh, process, I wrote a, report, a, a letter to Army Headquarters requesting that that advice and my letter of displeasure to Kone Majegbe be given to me so that I will tender it in this commission. This is the letter I wrote. Because I wrote it in Lagos, I was not, it was not easy to get to Abuja on time. I faxed it to Abuja. And I'm grateful to God that even when I talked to the officer in charge of discipline in Army headquarters, he referred me again to Colonel Muku. And I talked to Colonel Muku on phone. Last him here. So I made effort even to get those documents. But I have not got them before I came here. Now, based on what Army... What have you got? Photocopy? Or? No, I didn't the get anything. Copy? Nothing. I faxed it to them, but I didn't get it. Based, based on legal advice, this case was set forwarded from Army headquarters by the Chief of Administration, whose duty it is to do such things, to Lagos Garrison Command for Colonel Maju Egbe to be tried by court martial. All the papers were prepared. And in the Army, you see, staff officers cannot try officers. You must send them to a command. The biggest command in Lagos was Lagos Garrison Command. So to get jurisdiction, you must post the officer to Lagos Garrison Command for jurisdiction. Effectively, Colonel Majegbe was posted to Lagos Garrison Command for jurisdiction. He was to face trial. However, because General Sabo failed to get me involved, the Hawks started working. They did all the abracadabra they can do. They stored everything until the and as long as General Abasha was alive, nobody can challenge General Sabo. General Basha was his power base. Everything he is doing, everybody living in Nigeria is against General Abasha. He is the only one who is for Abasha. Therefore, we are all threats to General Abasha. So, as far as General Abasha lived, nobody could try to imagine him because me, the person he was looking for, was not to be tried. Now, God, in his mercies, took General Abacha. The power base of General Sabo, gone. Army headquarters now reopened that case that was stored by General Sabo and set in motion again the process of trying Colonel Majegbe as recommended long time ago. Now, my Lord, something happened. Before now, Kone Majiegbe has been known to indulge in illegal duties. I remember vividly, thank God we have Nigerian Nigeria, Nigeria intelligence, DMI officers here. In a meeting, because every week we have a meeting, one Kone Dare entered the meeting one day and looked at Kone Majiegbe and said, they say, now nah, you, they always do illegal duty. When will you stop? On another occasion, Colonel Frank Omenka, CEO Security Group, came fuming that he has report that Colonel Majegbe is involved in illegal duty in Apapa. He followed it up with a report. One Colonel Ahmad told me 
that he was physically present when even General Sabo advised Kone Majegbe to desist from illegal duties. So my Lord, what I'm trying to say is that this Kone Majegbe that did this illegal duty about Chief Chumanzeribe, he has, he has antecedent. He has been doing it. Why did General Sabo condone him? I will get to that later. However, Kone Majegbe was to be tried but people by then General Sabo has been retired yes he has been retired Kone, people now went to the DMI who took over from General Sabo who is Kone Dare they now went to him and pleaded that the whole world knows that Kone Majegwe is used to illegal duty you cannot take him to any court that they won't jail him Look at his. Well, they pleaded that he should prevail on the chief of army staff, who then was General Bamei, to please quietly retire this general, this nuisance, Colonel Majegbe. Let him go. <coughs> no problem. General Bamei now said, "You are you." Colonel Dare went to General Bamei and presented the plea. General Bamei said, "Well, you are the head of the corps." I have certain obligation to respect your views. But what you have said now, go and put it in writing. Otherwise, tomorrow somebody will say this and this. We have people here who can corroborate. Konedare, the dear mind, now push this request in writing. That instead of undergoing the whole process of this court martial, let, the, let them just take action, let him be retired. General Bamei now took this letter to Army Council, the highest disciplinary body in the armed forces, the only body that is headed by the head of state that can authorize the retirement of an officer. At that level, it was decided to heed the plea of the DMI, Konedare, and compulsorily retire Konemajegbe. Therefore, Kone Majegbe was compulsorily retired. And those who know the military system, compulsory retirement is a disgrace. Your services is no longer required. Go. Kone Majegbe was retired. And as far as the Nigerian army is concerned, as far as the military is concerned, this marks the end of that case that started with the <coughs> illegal planting of explosive items in the house of Chief Chuma Unzeribe, illegal arrest of Chief Chuma Unzeribe, illegal detention of Chief Chuma Unzeribe. He was really detained illegally. So, in this case, as far as I know, there is a beginning. There was a process, or a due process, and there was a conclusion, disciplinary action taken. Therefore, for the army, the case was finished, not even closed, finished. However, Chief Chuma Unzeribe, somewhere down the line, not knowing the people he was dealing with, not knowing the organization of the killer group I talked about, thought he was very clever that he could get reprieve. But that's why he wrote petition. But meanwhile, my lord, I want to tell you what went on while investigation was going on. Kone Majegbe investigation found out was given money by Chief Victor Okafo. He was given about 200,000, the one we know, Naira. After Chief Chuma Zeribe was arrested, he gave him a BMW car as part of the arrangement to deal with Chief Chuma Zeribe. Because Victor Okafo is popularly called Ezego. 
When Chimchu Manzeri wrote a petition against him and he was detained in Abuja here, he looked up and then said, Chai, me, king of money, what can money not do? Who is this small boy to put me in so much problem? I will teach him a lesson. I don't want to go into detail because I don't know. He was able to find his way out of police net in, in Abuja. He now said, Chumanzeri went to police. I will go to the army. This time it's not police. That you will not see light for so many months. I think you went to police. Wait for me. Meanwhile, Chu uh, Ezego knows Kone Majegbe before that time. During the 1997 local government election, both parties, Ezego and Oka, uh, Ezego and Chuman Zeribe were supporting opposing camp, camp and they were rivals. Ezego, perhaps using his word, prevailed. His candidate was winning, but they did not announce the result. He therefore contacted his friend, Colonel Maji Ebe, said, look, I have a problem. We have won, but nobody is announcing results. Colonel Maji Ebe told him, said, don't worry, I will do something for you. Whether Colonel Maji Ebe did something, you know, whether, he did not, whether he did not do, I don't know. But as luck will have it, within six hours, the result was announced. Ezego now believed that Kone Majegbe is an almighty person. That is why when he was incarcerated here and he found his way out, the first person he went to was Kone Majegbe. We have be, somebody has disgraced me. What can we do to double that disgrace? That's how they now planned how to plant explosives because as at that time, this bomb explosion was going on in Lagos. And we in DMI, we were mostly interested. In fact, we created a special unit, which I call Special Operations Team. And that unit was created because of the way General Sabo frustrated me. I didn't know they were the people planting bombs. I was looking for those planting bombs, and Kone Franco Mecca, the unit that would do it, was not doing anything. So I had to create a special unit. I bought 15 motorcycles. But walkie talkie, spend so much money to be patrolling Lagos to get at those planting bombs. My Lord, little did I know that it was my people planting bombs. <laughs> now, Chief Ezego arranged with Kone Maji Egbe to do this business for a fee. However, Kone Maji Egbe is very close to General Sabo. And they were always, Kone Maji Egbe, even in the office, you can see, I'm sorry, my Lord, all these 419 people from a particular part of the country, you can always see them coming to see him, coming to see him, this 419, and then he was linking them up with General Sabo. I will prove that later. Now, why Jina Sabo was in war college? This Kone Majegbe was the person working for him. Jina Sabo said he came first in war college, he did well. Well, it is true. The main thing you do in war college is the major paper that is written. My Lord Kone Majegbe has a degree in English. He was an old teacher. It is Kone Majegbe that wrote General Sabo's paper from the first word to the last. My Lord, look at the paper. It's not hid, it's here. This is the paper with which General Sabo got award in War College. Now, General Sabo, uh, Kone Majegbe wrote this paper. I can tell you, let him contest it. General Sabo did not cross a T in this paper. General Sabo did not dot an I on this paper. While he was in war college, Kone Majegbe was writing the paper in Lagos. And Warrant Officer Chukuma, who is the clerk to Kone Majegbe, who today is in the villa here. If you give the order now on the air, he will hear it in the evening and come here tomorrow. He is the one that typed everything 
He will tell you that he never saw General Sabo's handwriting once. He typed it, completed it, binded it like this, and then it was carried to Abuja to General Sabo. In war college, aside from this major paper, you have assignments. In Benin, General Sabo is given assignment, he will fall. There is one very big intellectual in our place, Colonel Akiyemi. He will either phone me or phone Aki and me directly. They ask us to do such thing. Yes, sir. We start writing. We start to start and send to him. That is how he came first in war college. My Lord. My Lord. We don't. No. We should not. It's not part of our case. But I want to. I thought you stood My up. Yes, sir. You are controlling him, not he controlling you. You want to tend any document? No, sir. Well? No, sir. No, my lord. My lord, just to conclude with this, if you read his acknowledgement, uh, I, uh, I am extremely grateful to Colonel J. W. To Colonel J. W. T. Bohr, Dr. OBC Umolise, Colonel Maju Egbe, and Lieutenant Colonel Akin Yemi. Those were the two people who wrote all his papers. And uh, for reading through my scripts, no script, they wrote everything. <laughs> and giving me very useful suggestions, which undoubtedly improved and enriched this project. Then he come to me. My Lord, I will tell you, Girasabo said people came to power to plunder, to steal money, to do this. Ah, oh, my God. General Sabo, as DMI, took all the money that was even given to me. It is on document. I'm not saying by mouth. 60, 65% of all the money that came to us went to General Sabo while he was in war college. 1.5 million every quarter, plus 300,000 to his wife. I will show you. He now came to acknowledge that. I am grateful to Colonel S. E. D. Henry for the material and financial support in this project. <laughs> that is true. Now, I talk of Warren of Chukumba. He went on to now acknowledge the two people who did the work. Warren of Michael Chukuma again, together with Colonel Maju, whom he has called before, from the abundance of the heart, speaking, you know, you look, he said, Colonel Maju are the people that I will ever remain grateful for the typing, proofreading, and for the work. <laughs> My Lord, I brought this to show you that there was fraternity between Konemaji Egbe and Brigadier General Sabo. That was why when I left DMI, Konemaji Sabo now organized. He has been given a BMW car. He has been given money. Konemaji Egbe now took the other party to General Sabo to also settle General Sabo. What did Ezego do? If you read a paragraph on the petition, it is said that Ezego's house is full of exotic cars. Ezego now organized money. I don't know how much, but I know money changed hands. But the one we all saw, Ezego now gave General Sabo a state of the art Toyota Land Cruiser. American specification. The latest model. That was his own price. For that General Konemajegbe's connection. Now that he's in trouble, Ezego has money. Even in trouble, he wanted to see by his way and deal with Unzeribe. The problem, my lord, was that Ezego is a 419. Some years later, the owners of the cars started looking for it in America. Somebody has stolen their car. Where is this Jeep? It is a Jeep worth $100 million. It cannot go like that. They use satellite. They use everything and trace that Jeep to Ginasabo's house. Sabo and the saga of stolen jeep. I'm not the one that
I wrote it. You sit down there looking. My lord, I seek to tender that, that document in evidence. <laughs> My lord, this thing was carried by Tell Magazine. One by one, which one are you tendering? I attached the two. Which one are you tendering now? They are the same thing now. Yes. My lord, the one published by Tribune is the same thing. Mark that exit five. Yes. 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 There is uh, another one. The same story was carried by Tribune. And he says, Army General orders in soup over stolen jeeps. My Lord, we seek to tender that in evidence too. Do you have any other evidence to show? Exhibit six. Yes, yes. In respect of the jeep. Yes, I will just uh, highlight certain issues here. My lord, if you read, read through what was published, this jeep. You see, Colonel Maji Egbe is the person who wrote General Sabo's paper in War College. He now told Ezego, please give him a jeep. Say it is in appreciation of your excellent work in War College. So that is what was done. Now the jeep stolen in America were stolen in 1996. At least this particular Sabo's own. Now. It was given to Sabu definitely after war college. Because when the police arrested General Sabu, there were other three other people who were arrested at the same time. Each person said, Mine, I bought it at Susu Place. He took them there, then they continued in the police continued investigation. Each person that was arrested will take you to where he bought. Ah, I didn't know, I didn't learn, you know, look where I bought it. See how much I paid for it. When they got to Maogasabo, <laughs> he said me, you know, one son is a man, dash me. Police say, dash. For what? He said, you know, for my excellent performance in war college. My Lord, you see the relationship. Kone Majegbe, who worked for him in war college. Ezego is now arrested. He told Ezego, give Kone, use this excuse that you are dashing him motor because of his excellent performance in war college. Because Kone Majegbe is the person who helped him in war college. So he now told police, it was given to me because of my excellent performance in war college. By who? Sonny Suleiman. Which address? 98... Uh, 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 of, of 98 Unambi Azikiwe Street, Balogun, Lagos. Number one, Balogun is a street. Unambi Azikiwe is a street. But let's just forget that yet. That's the, that's the information he gave them. They say very well. Let's go there and arrest Sonny Suleiman. Problem, my lord, is that they got there, there was no Sonny Suleiman. The best they could go was, okay, that person, he traveled, he traveled. My lord, till today, nobody has seen Sonny Suleiman. So, this was General Sabu. And now the police, of course, confiscated the car from him. And they are now planning to send it back to the rightful owners in America. Then General Sabu will come here and talk on the integrity of people. My Lord, more pathetic, he knew fully well that this car was stolen. When the 
Everything I'm saying is here. And I'm telling you, my Lord, I have seen it. This is police A Interpol report. That is what they are quoting here. And I've marked it. You will have time to go through. I've marked all the area. You see, Jira is, is it an exhibit yet? It is, yes, my Lord. Uh, exhibit what? Five. Exhibit five, sir. Five. You are quoting from exhibit five? Yes, sir. All right. And let me just read a, a part in, on page 11. Okay, let me start with the funny one. When they looked into the car with Sabo, Sabo said he was giving this car after war college. The car was stolen in America in, in February, in Genu January 1997. The year he finished war college. The custom papers found in this car that was used to clear it said the car was cleared in Nigeria in February 1996 before the car was even stolen. A car stolen in America in January 1997. That's when the owner said our car is stolen. Sabo's custom papers found in the car said the car was cleared in Nigeria in 1996. One year before the car was stolen. Even the custom papers we are forged. We are talking of integrity of our, a general. My Lord, let me read on page, page 11. Just uh, a little bit down. The, the cookie had, okay, the Toyota Jeep with chassis number JT 73HU855AJO J0114138 impounded from Sabo was reported stolen from the US on January 13, 1997. Curiously enough, the custom and excise papers found in the vehicle show that the Jeep was shipped into Nigeria on February 8, 1996. That was almost a whole year before it was actually stolen in the United States. <coughs> then I go to the middle paragraph, the middle, pa the middle uh, paragraph. He said, Sabo was said to have claimed that the Jeep in question was, I did not quote exactly what he wrote in his statement, quote, was given to me as a gift by one Sonny Suleiman of 98, Sonny Suleiman is even funny name, of 98 Unandi Azikewe Street, Balogun, Lagos. He said Suleiman gave him the car as a show of appreciation for his outstanding performance at the National War College. I continue on the next paragraph. What may, however, complicate Sabo's case is that the receipt of purchase he submitted to the police indicated that the vehicle was bought from a certain Jailal investment of no fixed address. You cannot trace the place. So, this is what General Sabo got in compensation for holding Muzerebe. Meanwhile, my Lord, you must know something, we must correct an impression. Once you stand on General Sabo's way, he will tell so much lies against you. You will not even know what to say again. If your hands are not as clean as my own, that can come and stand and face him, my Lord, you cannot talk to him. General Bameyi is one of the general in Nigeria Army who checkmated General Sabo. He curtailed his excesses. And he will never ever forget General Bami. While Chief Chuma Nzeribe was in detention, in the, sir, in the first place, I had a feeling, I've never talked to Chuma Nzeribe before, I had a feeling that he became aware that money was changing hands, vehicles were changing hands, and that the case in which I release him may turn to something else. He being another troublemaker. 
now wrote to the chief of defense intelligence to express his plight. Uh, I was detained. Although I'm released, you see what is going on. Unfortunately for him, he was writing to a member of the killer group. Trouble upon trouble. They now send that same report to Dinasabu, one of the members. Somebody wants to spoil your name. He said, is that so? Invite him. That is the beginning of Chumanziribe's problem. He now went for a charge. Meanwhile, Ezego has planned that if he cannot leave detention, at least the same Chumanziribe from detention, he can buy his way to bring him to where he is. Two of them will be there. Jirasabo, from the gift and largesse of Ezego, was already looking for a way to deal with Unzeribe. Therefore, Unzeribe now walked into their trap by writing petition against anybody he wrote against. They now invited him, now detained him, since they, that was what they were looking for before, detained him on 1st of September with the same Ezego. My Lord, I don't know the statement evidence he has given you. But I know nobody talked to him while he was there. Nobody called him one day say, we arrest you for social purpose. Nobody talked to him. He would have died in that detention. The only saving grace was that God in his infinite mercies took General Abacha and General Sabo's power crumbled. But meanwhile, while he was in detention, the rumor started going around that General Sabo's excesses is becoming too much to bear. The army, the army has fine officers. My lord, the army is good. The Nigerian army is one of the best army in this world. The problem is that few people, especially the killer group, hijacked everything and created fear everywhere. Nigeria army is good yesterday, is good today, it will be good tomorrow. It's one of the best army in the world. General Bameyi, in his frustration, concern, did what no other chief of army staff in Nigeria army has ever done. He decided to take a risk, to correct a bad situation. My Lord, don't listen to the only allegation made against General Bameyi here. <coughs> Most of them are not true. General Bameyi, because of his boldness, drove his car to security group on 30th March after Unzerbe has spent up to six months there. He brought out all the detainees in security group. Abba, what did this man do? What did this man do? When General Bameyi was leaving security group. He wrote something on the visitor's book. He wrote something on the visitor's book. My Lord, we seek to tender that document in evidence. Exhibit 7. Yes, my Lord, please. Please read this document to the Honorable Commission. My Lord, I read the document, Exhibit 7. Major General I. Arubamei, Chief of Army Staff. On visit to security group, there is the urgent need to release soldiers being held for minor offenses to their units.
for disciplinary action. Civilly has been held for 419 and related cases should also be released to the appropriate organ which is headed by a military personnel, i.e. the Presidential Task Force on Trade Malpractices. The practice of detaining people for minor offenses must also stop. Only serious cases of national security should be, tra should be treated by the group while as much as possible thank you while as much as possible civilians should be handed over to the nigerian police unless there are national security issues involved i hope by the time, by the next time I visit this place, things would have taken shape. Signed, Major General, 30th March 98. Colonel, do you have any other document to show in this regard? Certainly. As the Chief of Army Staff got to his office, because of the anger, consternation, his concern for the way people were being heard, including Chuma Nzeribe. He ordered the chief of administration, the officer in charge of discipline, to write a letter to General Sabo on what he has said. That, so that there was a follow-up the next day, all expressing concern for this illegal detention of civilians. Yes, my lord. My lord, I seek to tender this letter in evidence. Market exhibit eight. My Lord, this is a letter from Headquarters Nigeria Army, dated 31st March 1998, the day, the day following the day the Chief of Army Staff visited security group where Chief Nzeribe was being detained. The heading is Unlawful Detention of Civilians in Military Facilities. One, I am directed to observe the arbitrary and unlawful detention of civilians in military detention facilities based on offenses that are either civil or capable of being handled by, or, by other appropriate, appropriate government agencies. It is also worrisome to observe that while such illegal arrests and unlawful detentions are carried out, the victims are deliberately incarcerated in the guise of endless investigations, pathetically. Serving officers and soldiers are also detained under these circumstances. It is in view of this irregularity that I am directed to instruct you to release, transfer, forthwith all civilians detained uh, detained cases in your custody to the appropriate civil authorities or government agencies for further investigation and prosecution. Similarly, cases involving serving officers, soldiers, should be promptly dispensed with to enable a court martial where necessary rather than perpetual incarceration. 
Military cells are meant for the confinement of military personnel where the need arises.